William Hunt's several role sponsors the Trilby Tour. The perfect gentleman's playground. On the occasion of the 10th anniversary Trilby Tour World Championship Final, we thought we'd talk to some of the players to find out what makes the Trilby so special. Ten years. Ten years since we started this thing. Who'd have known, you know, from, from where we started, a stupid little idea, let's go and play golf in some hats, and uh, it's caught on. We're still here. It just gives amateurs that opportunity to taste how the pros must feel and when they're getting over that putt. It, it may be six foot, ten foot, but they're shaking. It gives you that thrill and that adrenaline rush. So it's really good. You go to a normal tournament and, you, you know, golf's an individual sport. It's not a team event. So I think this sort of treads the middle ground a little bit because everybody, the camaraderie with everybody, feels a bit teamy, but it's not. It's an individual event. You go to a random event, you just go, you play, you do well, you don't, you go home, that's it. Um, but here you get a lot of banter, you see the familiar faces, everyone gives you a bit of stick on the tees, you know, people are watching you on the incoming six, on the incoming three, you're looking at the boards, you know, you're just not used to it as an amateur, so, you know, it brings it home, uh, keeps it interesting, yeah, keeps you, well, sometimes keeps you focused, sometimes makes you go off over here, yeah. yeah. This is not just any your normal tournament, you know, I've played in lots of tournaments all over the world. A lot of people come here and think, oh, we'll just step up and play. And then they realise, actually, no, you can't do that to get success. You've got to work hard to get it. It's a unique experience. It's a unique tour. When you get in the Trilby Tour, it's obviously the cameras. You get that experience. Um, it also finds out what you are like as a golfer and what you're made of more than anything. Well, where else do you, uh, do you feel the pressure that you get on the first tier here? It takes people to a completely different place. It takes them out of the comfort zone. You put people into that enclosure. When you're outside, you're all standing there having a laugh, but you walk around the corner onto that first tee, and then all of a sudden it's serious. You know, seeing grown men shake on the first tee is uh, it's quite something, you know? They all come with a bravado and they all talk the talk. When they first step on that first tee, they've got to walk the walk. It's like a, they're encombed in, in a lot, like a bubble, and it's, and it's a surreal experience. And you won't experience that until you get in the final four. It is tense, you know, your heart rate goes up a little bit, you feel yourself, you know, your heart beating out of your chest, you just want to sort of grip and rip and pray for the best, close your eyes and swing hard sort of thing. But they're the moments that you play and you practice for to get in that position. So you've got to try and enjoy them. And all you want to do is put the ball down, hit it and get up that fairway and get out of that first tee box. And then the world's all right. But the first tee box is still, I mean, I've played lots of times, but it's still a daunting place to be. In a three hole playoff, you've got maybe 12 shots, 10, 11, 12 shots, and you've got to get every single one of them right on the first time. <laughs> I don't think people understand the pressure you're under when you're in that playoff, teeing off. You know, I've played in this for 10 years now. I've played probably 20 times. And, but in that playoff, when they're all there and William's taking the mickey out of you, and you've got to hit that tee shot, it's, it, is, it is quite pressurised. Even the nearest a pin to get into the playoffs, again, I've fluffed a few of them in my time. <laughs> I like the camaraderie, to be honest with you. I think it's great. Everybody's, um, everybody's here to win, but everybody's here to have a bit of fun. One thing that absolutely blindsided me, and, and it, it was almost, this thing was almost set up to, to not do this, was to create societies. Because those guys that have embraced it and get it have created their own gangs. And one of the things I'm most proud of, even though it absolutely wasn't my idea, is the friendships over the last 10 years it's, it's created. Best friends it's created. The Trilby, you do, you, you, you form a real uh, strong bond because I uh, live in Bournemouth and Jamie is in Leicester and we still, you know, uh, we even organise uh, games that are kind of in the middle. Speak yeah. daily, don't we? Yeah, we do, yeah. Every day we're on the phone, yeah. <laughs> and also the really good thing is that our wives, they, we met up at Down Mahoy yeah. about, about oh, four, yeah. three, four years yeah, ago. Brilliant. And the girls had a great time together, came out and watched us, so we hook up with them and we chat. So seriously, it's almost like we get together, we know we're going to do it every year. And as soon as you meet up, you just pick up where you left off. And I, I think it's, well, to me, that's part of the buzz. Initially, yeah, you want to win. Hey, of course I want to win. But at the end of the day, it's it's like a bunch of mates and you're hooking up and you're having a, a day or two together. And, yeah, and that's yeah. the real joy of it, isn't it? Everyone's such a close-knit group of people. It's almost like a big family. I don't know, it's hard to explain. The friendships. We'll be here long after I finish playing golf, you know, and that's the important thing. The friends you make here, uh, will last me a lifetime and it's all down to the Trilby Tour, William Hunt and how he actually makes this um, event work. 
Probably the best thing is uh, his will, I suppose. <laughs> Eccentric of that he is. But um, yeah, I think he makes the tournament what it is. You know, I think it would be a, a shadow of his former self without him. If we can carry on as we are for the next 10 years, what could be wrong with that? You know, people still don't get us. Well, your loss, because we're having a great time. the Trilby Tour World Championship final, there could really only be one venue. The city of culture and spiritual home of golf, Hull. We return to the Hull Golf Club to find out who will reign supreme, who will be the creme de la crop, who will be crowned Trilby Tour World Champion for 2017. Coming up in the show, we have all the very best of the play from the biggest day of the Trilby year. The biggest hitters make it to the four-man three-hole playoff to decide who will be Trilby World Champion. And we'll sneak in some of the worst golf of the day in Rogue's Gallery. Anna Whiteley will be talking to regional champions and the other qualifiers in the first team. But now, here's the champion of all our hearts, our commentator, Rob Lee. Thank you, Matt. Welcome to Hull Golf Club. It's the third time we've been here, twice for the twos, but the first time it's held the Trilby Tour World Championship final. It is immaculate. It's the Augusta of the Northeast, if you like. And this is where men become, well, yes, they become men. Let's get down to Anna on the first tee. Qualifying from Karis Green, Jason Murch. How far you've come on your first ever Trilby experience. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, it was very nervous, um, but great fun. Really enjoyed it. Well, you're here at the world final. How is your nerves now that you're here? Um, at the moment, I'm okay. Yeah. When they call my name, it might be different. But uh, yeah, the first experience is really good. So I got all the nerves out of the way. And today, hopefully, mm -hmm. it'll be okay. And to be world champion, what would that mean to you, Jason? Oh, it would be fantastic. Um, it's something I've been thinking about all year <laughs> <laughs> and practicing all year for. So if I can get there, it'll be really good. Oh, well, as it means so much to you, I wish you luck. Thank you very Thank much. You. Well, it all starts here on the first. This is young Jason Murch. Now, this is interesting. He plays right-handed, but cack-handed. Look, hands around the other way. So the glove is actually on the right hand because the left hand is below. And that's not a bad shot with that method. Wow, doesn't persistence pay off, Mark Gurney? 11 times trying to qualify for the Trilby. And finally, this year, you have done it. How exciting is that? It's superb, uh, to be fair. <laughs> At least they can't say I gave up. I eventually got here. It's been tough. It's, it's good. It's good. The feeling is good. So you qualified in? In the Oxfordshire, in horrendous weather. Mm -hmm. But by the sounds of it, everyone's talking about they played in horrendous weather. So everyone's using that excuse by the sounds of it. <laughs> Hopefully today is not going to be like it was yesterday, because yesterday was absolutely hammering it down. Uh, the greens are very quick here, really quick. Yeah. And I'm quite a good putter, so that's going to that's gonna help me. All I've got to do is get on the green first, and, and then we'll go from there. Good stuff, Mark. Well, God loves a trier, so best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, we're the driver. 505 yards, a par five. Just take that. And it's left again. It's like a magnet down there. Oh, that sounds like it was a good bounce. Better to be lucky than good. And Mark is very lucky. Well, this man next to me, Nigel Wakefield, has just been tipped off by last year's world champion that you could be this year's world champion. Bit of pressure. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of pressure. I mean, I only played with Paul once, um, and that was this year in a, in a, in a match with uh, Melissa Reed. Mm -hmm. So we had, a, we had a great game, and um, 
yeah, we'll see how we get on. So what is it about your game, do you think, as to why Paul has pinpointed you as a potential champ? It's probably because um, you know, I've got a reasonably high handicap. I've not been playing long, um, but I hit the ball fairly long for, for a new player. Uh-huh. Um, so I think it's the length I hit the ball, probably. Mm-hmm. And uh, being in the company of last year's world champion, has that inspired you for today? <laughs> no, it's made me more <laughs> nervous. Um, added pressure, I think. Um, yeah, you know, I, I've, I've tried this three times. It's the first time I've ever got through, so I'm um, just happy to be here. Well, Nigel's from Norwich, so... Fairway wood. That's a good swing for somebody that hasn't played the game for too long. And we can see it. That's a first. On the first. Well, he finished second in the World Championship final last year. Michael, you want to go one step further this year, I imagine. Yeah, uh, it'd be nice to go one step further this year, but uh, game's pretty good. Of course, it's in decent nick. I think it's just a case of holding some putts this year. I've, I've I missed a couple of putts last year in the in the final, so hopefully, if I can uh, just hold a couple of putts, then maybe I'll go one step more. Now I know you've been here before, but I have to say you do feel nervous. Yeah, you do. To, to be honest, I was standing, I was standing on the putting green. I didn't know whether I was cold or nervous. I was shaking, <laughs> but uh, once I hit a few balls in the net, warm myself up. Uh, I think just giving it a good old fresh gets the nerves out. So yeah, you do get nervous. You always do. Obviously, cameras around and a bit of expectation. Mm-hmm. A um, bit of anxiety as well, but once I settle into the round, it'll be fine. It's nerves, but it's good nerves for the two handicapper. He'll fancy his chances. Willowy action. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Well, we all know how hard it is to win on the Trilby, so what could be more frustrating than throwing away a two-shot lead on the 18th? Where was that, Preston? Preston Golf Club. Oh, God. It was a bit disappointing. Yeah. Um, but very much enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, made the playoff and got to the final here, so that was the main objective. So, Patrick, what happened on the 18th then? Um, I hit a bit of a bad tee shot on the last mm-hmm. that just stayed in bounds and made a very good seven. Yeah. Uh, is there such a thing as a very good seven? Um, I thought it were very good, <laughs> yes. Um, one of the other playing partners, he made a three on the last, so I think he deservedly won it. Okay. So uh, we're a bit disappointed, yeah. but I'm here today to enjoy myself and hopefully do well. We've got Wakefield that qualified at Preston, and we've got Timlin that qualified at Preston from Wakefield. Oh, it's all coming together. Flusher, get down that fairway. Timlin on fire. Well, lots of our Trilby Torians travel far and wide to play, but Ben, you have literally come off the 13th green where you live, is that right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, I'm just around the corner, so it's just uh, got a nice light in this morning and yeah. uh, just strolled across. Good stuff. So, home club, you yeah. know this golf course better than most. How tough is it going to be? I think it is. It's going to be fairly tough today, yeah. Um, the greens are really slick. Mm-hmm. Um, sort of the firm as well so you're not going to be able to just pitch it next to the flag so yeah no it's going to be a good test well this isn't your first final championship of nottingham about five years ago why haven't you won since ben (laughs) like i say you keep reminding me of this (laughs) um i don't know it's it's just not quite happened since hopefully i've been saving it for today well there's nothing like a world championship to get your attention rosenbrook favorite here no strokes for rosenbrook scratch player Uh, just tailing off a little bit Let's have a look. It's a long way down, isn't it? Look at those fairways, little rivets in them. Beautiful. Out into the golf course then and to the par three fourth. Two points so far for Jason Murch. Not a flying start. An indication of perhaps why he's sucking eggs. Gurney. Eighth hole. Another par three. Lovely little hole, this. Only 138 yards. He should really find the green with a wedge. Wakefield coming towards the end of the front nine. In trouble here, so he's third at the par four. Spin. Look at the speed of these greens. Billiard tables, they are. Yes, it just wandered off. Merch, the cackander. Only two points so far. He's only played three holes. Nearly clipped the pin and it's degreened. 
He'll get the putter on that. Back to Gurney with his second at the rinky dink par 3 8. Nice thump of the sand there, and this is well played. Oh, that did hit the pin. A little unlucky it's gone that far past. Game of fractions, that's what it is, a game of fractions. Wakefield's par attempt. Stroke index won the ninth. It's the hardest hole in the golf course. Get in, he shouted. Internally, the screams died to a whimper. Gurney's par putter eight. Trying to bring the course to its knees. Oh, that's going to help, but didn't qualify. 15 points. That's probably not quite going to be good enough. Just shows you what's not possible, though. The drill be tour. Now, Jason Murch. This is interesting. Cack handed and now putts left handed. He's got it all going on. 22 points in the end for Jason. Nothing to qualify for here except the final four and the final and a chance to be a world champion. A lot at stake. Let's get back to that eighth tee. Lovely little hole. 13 points so far for Wakely Smith. Now, can he find the target in one? Yes, he can. Oh, an extra chew on that as well. Well struck. Don't see a lot of spin on the Trilby Tour. Wakefield, yes. 32 points. So that's good enough to lead in the clubhouse. Up of 15 handicap. It's a pretty good effort. Terminating coming towards the end. Remember, not too many shots to play with the two handicapper. He wants to make amends for his meltdown at Preston. Settle down, settle down. Just caught that knuckle. That's all right. Ben Rosenbrook, 13th tee is pretty close to where he lives. So definitely in the world's top 1%. 27 points after 12 holes. Outrageous. And maybe we're seeing signs of a player at the top of his form with all the local knowledge you need. Wakely Smith for the two at the eighth. Brighten up the card, up the hill, and then down the hill to the hole. Turning a bit more. Couldn't have hit a better putt. 31 points in the end at the moment inside the top four. Tim Lin's birdie attempt at 15. Needs a fast finish now. Well, that's pretty good from there. So it'll be a par. Rosenbrook, on the other hand, just going further into the red. Birdie putt at 13. And a quick one. Oh, super quick and super good. Make that 30 points. This could be a Trilby to a record coming up. Back to Anna. Thanks, Rob. Well, I am in fine company down here on the first tee with defending world Trilby Tour champion Paul Llewellyn. How nice is it to be back? Ah, it's lovely, isn't it? Um, we've had a good year. Nice mm -hmm. and chilled. Um, nice to come back out and sort of lock horns with all the big boys again. Yeah. Well, one year on from your world championship title, how do you feel now looking back? Because it was a massive achievement for you. You'd wanted it for so long. Well, we, I mean, we got our monkey off the back, didn't we? Everybody was saying to us, you know, you've won nothing until you've won the big one. We've won loads and loads of regionals. Um, I suppose everybody talks about it, but actually delivering it was, was something else. So, yeah, it was good. And how are you kind of approaching today? Is it less pressure because you've done it, or is there more pressure because you want it again now that you've tasted it? Um, well, nobody's ever defended it. So, you know, we go after it, obviously. Of course we do. Uh, we've done we've done some prep. Um but we've also got one eye on improving over the winter for next year. So mm -hmm. we've already got plans ahead for next year. Uh, it hasn't been great preparation. Work's got in the way this year, but we'll give it our best. OK, good stuff, Paul. Well, as you say, no one has ever defended the World <laughs> Championship title, so this could be the day. Best of luck. Thanks, <laughs> Thank Anna. You. What sort of a Trilby Turian are you, Rocky Llewellyn? Letting work get in the way of your Trilby Tour aspirations, driver. He's got the look again, hasn't he? He has the look. So Rocky Llewellyn underway and we'll see how he progresses in this World Championship final when we come back after the break. The perfect gentleman's playground. Welcome back to the stunning Hull Golf Club for the William Hunt Trilby Tour World Championship final. We'll get back to the tension on the fairways in just a minute, but first, let's take a little time just to remind ourselves who the regional champions were, where they won, and how they won. The 2017 Trilby Tour kicked off at Bobra, where a once-in-a-lifetime performance saw Ryan Beaver become champion of Norfolk. I was very surprised to get there. 
I just had one of them days that everything was dropping the hole and that's all I could do really. <laughs> I hit a shot on 18 with a I think six iron. I had to carry water if I didn't. It was just enough club to carry. I think if that would have gone in there, it would have been a different story, but it just carried enough to, to give me two putts to win, which I got there in the end. Event two meant a trip to Preston, where Patrick Timlin threw away a two-shot lead in the playoff to let Jack Marin walk away champion of Lancashire. I couldn't believe it to begin with. As soon as I held that foot, I went over to my dad who was caddying for me. I was gasping several times. I was like, is that it? Have I won? The championship of Northumberland was played at Northumberland Golf Club and first past the post was local lad Mark Walton, who has since become everyone's friend in the clubhouse. You know, I know a few people, but I, I, I know a lot of people to sort of say hello to and that's about it. But now it's uh, everybody's coming up to say hello and it was Captain's Day about three weeks after the event and uh, every, virtually everybody came over when I, when I came off the, off the green sort of, sort of pat me on the back and stuff. So, it was, so I know a lot more people now than I did uh, before the, the tour. The unbelievable championship of Cumbria took place at the unbelievable Keras Green Golf Club and the unbelievable winner was Paul Unbelievable Naylor. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I got up there with no expectations to be honest, just wanted to experience the whole Trilby Tour thing. But to win it was just unbelievable. The tour's first trip to Yorkshire this year saw Peter Ferris triumph at the very scenic but very wet Kirby Moorside Golf Club. How I won that, I just do not know. I, I, still now I just think, how on earth did I win that? But I just played out my skin that day. Best round of golf I've had this year. Even now, I just think, little old Pete, Yorkshire Regional Champion. And I just laugh, because I can't believe I did it. Forest Hill Golf Club, in the heart of the National Forest, hosted the Championship of Leicestershire, and club member Mark Turner walked away with the prize. On the last hole, I went down the last one under, and then uh, nailed a 12-foot putt to, to win on the last hole, which was fantastic. Being it's a, you know, it's at the home club, so... Yeah, it was great, great feeling. To Goddard Loose Golf Club for the Championship of Worcestershire, where Simon Gardner made good on a 10-year-old promise to win the Trilby. I played in the first Trilby, yeah. It was a long time ago. You know, to come back and win a regional qualifier on the 10th year anniversary, yeah, it doesn't get any sweeter than that. It's cool. The windiest Trilby ever took place at the beautiful Isle of Purbeck and a delighted Alan Kavanagh was blown away by becoming champion of Dorset. Amazing, I think that's been the best golfing experience, you know, really, really has. To, to play in that, to qualify was my objective, to compete really with the top and the best golfers on a really, really hard course was... I think, without doubt, the best achievement I've had. The feeling was total elation. Myself and my caddy just laughed all the way home. We couldn't believe it happened. <laughs> and the final regional qualifier of 2017 brought the tour back to the Oxfordshire, where an inch-perfect drive from Richard Preen delivered him the last champion spot of the year. I just got zoned in. It was such a, a windy day. You know, I don't generally win many competitions, tend to be the bridesmaid. Always get in there, but never deliver on the day. So, um, yeah, to actually do it on the day was just fantastic. So that's how our champions increase their popularity quotient exponentially. Let's get out to the golf course and track their misgivings and wrongdoings today. To Ferris, first of all, 14 points coming towards the end of the round. It's the Rogues Gallery special. It has to be. Jack Marin, champion of Lancashire. And from where he was, that was a pretty good effort. It won't hold on to the green, but he was certainly in trouble. That was his second at the 15th. Let's get ahead to 17, and Ryan Beaver, who won in Norfolk. Now, he's given this a big old welt. Oh, it needs to sit down. It's firm back there. Oh, it's flying into the... Well, I told you it's like Augusta. The azaleas. Maybe not. Horticulturally inaccurate. Preen chipping badly. Saw the tee shot come up some way short of the par 3 16th. And this is Ferris's second. Come on, Peter. Be a good up and down. Be a brilliant up and down now. That left for his par. 
Now he's in there somewhere, beavering about. And he tried to run it through the second cut. That didn't quite work out. Looking for par of the year for Peter Ferris. Back foot, just a little trap shot. Nudge it forward. Back up the green. Very well played. And still trundling past, even uphill. Amazing. Marin's birdie attempt at 15. You see, he was very close to the hazard. Shot. Settle. Shot. Yeah, you always have to wait for it to stop rolling. They keep going here at Hole Golf Club. Par attempt for Ryan Beaver. And he's nudging it forward, but not enough nudge. Preem for the par. 13 points so far. Battling against the par of the course. And that's still five feet left. So not going his way. Not today, anyway. But once a champion, always a champion. Keep that forever. Ferris for the bogey. I've got news for you. It's not going to be a double bogey. 16 points in the end. Doesn't make the final four, but it doesn't matter. You make it to a William Hunt Trilby Tour World Championship final. You're some player. For the par, Marin. Hard lines, Jack. 18 points off of two handicap. Not too much to play with in terms of shots. Not going to be his day. What about Beaver's attempt at 17? He's never going to reach that hole, ever. 25 points for Ryan. Well played, sir. But not to be. A point dearth for Preem. This is a bogey putt, ooh, which he just about makes, but only makes 25 points. We'll see you next year, Richard. Thank you for coming. Leicestershire's champion, Mark Turner, who plays off of six. Now, with a useful finish here, he can get involved. You pitch it past the hole, you're always going to struggle at Hole Golf Club, particularly in the summer. The stylish Simon Gardner. Here's third at 17, 25 points. And you could do it an up and down here. Lob shot. Simon won in Worcestershire. And he's played a beauty there. Couldn't be better. Reasons to smile. Paul Naylor, who won up at Keris Green. 175 yards to cover at 16. He's given this a smash. Flat out, this one. And he got a little bit of grip on that. So that was well played and worked out. Edge of the green, but not too far from the hole. Up for two. Turner, birdie chip at 15. It's not a long hole. 343 yards. Shot. And still some work left in that one. So for the two from the fringe at 16, up ahead. Naylor with the putter. Keep going, keep going. Go on, cameraman. Find the hole. Close. Par putt for Turner to get to 26 points. Unlucky. Good read. 28 and done. Will not make the final four, Mark Turner. Gardner has an opportunity, but he needs a big, big finish. Well, that's a very good up and down. 28 points for Simon. An excellent year. Champion on the Trilby Tour but not a world champion. And um, what about Naylor? He has to hold this putt, which he has done. 30 points right now. That's in the top four. Well, look who we have here. The man himself, Mr. William Hunt. Will, we are almost halfway through the day now. Yep. How do you think it's going so far? Um, everyone's off the tee. Mm -hmm. Some with mixed results, uh, yeah. as you saw, you know, the cannon fodder going out earlier. And the, the intensity stepped up, didn't it, when the... You know, we had them uh, sort of champions and runners up. Yeah, they, they yeah, really yeah. could feel it, the, the sort of the atmosphere crunch. Mm -hmm. And then when you got near to the business end with uh, the Carmichael Browns and the Llewellyns, well, yeah. sparks were flying. <laughs> I mean, the temperatures dropped a little bit with the weather, but it certainly dropped when those two got onto the tee. Yeah. It's going to be a great day. You are absolutely right. When the big guys come out here on the Trilby, because they've played it for years and years, and mm. they have genuine rivalries, mm. what does that add to the day? And who do you think could come out on top today? Oh, I, I, you know, all, all year I've been trying to sort of name the winners after uh, there's four players there's a hundred players <laughs> i can't who do i fancy 
it's hard to look beyond Llewellyn. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's, it's like saying, you know, will Manchester United or Manchester City or Chelsea win the, the, the football? It's like yeah. these are the giants of, of the Trilby Tour now. Richard Preen's coming in there now and just slipping through on the, on the, you know, on the outside. Mm -hmm. Ryan Beaver is a good player too. Ryan yeah. Beaver's handicaps come tumbling down. He's a confident boy. I don't think he's confident or just doesn't care. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's um, some fantastic golfers here. And to pick a winner for me right now, I'm going to struggle out the top four later. Never mind when there's yeah. 100 to, to, to choose from. So, yeah. Well, it's been such a good year in the Trilby. It's been the 10th anniversary. Do you think we've seen some of the best competition that we've ever seen? Very proud to have got here to 10 years. And I would say that the golf has intensified mm. yeah and the competition there's big personalities now and they've built a, they've got their own personas yeah. and it's fantastic the rivalry is fantastic <laughs> good stuff Will. we're enjoying every second of it we'll catch up with you later a joy. thank you we sure are what about the champion of the isle of purbeck down in dorset alan kavanagh it's far too still a day for him here because it was blowing like a hoolie down there look at that flag nothing absolutely nothing that just needs to settle a little bit. That's pretty well played. Mark Walton. He won up in Northumberland. At his golf club. Northumberland Golf Club. Released just a little bit. That's unlucky. Very soft lander, that one. On these firm surfaces. Kavanagh with the birdie attempt at 17. We know it's not short. Running and running and running away. Extraordinary. Walton from the front. He's got the claw right hand on there, or the paddle or the pistol, and that's how to putt. What a putt. 31 points. Top four right now for Mark Walton. <laughs> Will the smile be there when everyone's finished? We'll find out very shortly. Kavner's power attempt at 17. Very orthodox looking. Lots of ways to do it. 31 points, a very popular score. The eight handicapper in with the chance. Well, that's the champions dealt with when we come back after the break. We'll find out what happens at the top end of the William Hunt Trilby Tour World Championship Final. The perfect gentleman's playground. The pressure's on to find this year's William Hunt Trilby Tour World Champion. You can feel the tension and the pressure out there. It is palpable. Let's get out to the golf course then and catch up with those who have birdies on their minds. Starting with Gavin Matthews, who qualified at the Isle of Purbeck. Four handicapper, 32. Wakefield's best score in the clubhouse still stands. So Nigel hanging on. Gavin with work to do to Tim McCarthy. He plays in Wales, Woodlake Park Golf Club. And it's sitting up. The lie's not too bad. That's the encouraging thing. John Stott, who made the final at Keris Green, didn't win. Chance for revenge here. That sounded like a clip to treat. And that's why it's come up short. Yep, that's a divot. Absolutely spot on line. Heading for home now. Just short of the green. That sounded a bit thin. Just chasing on for Gavin Matthews. He's third at 10. Third for McCarthy as well at 14. 14th hole, 370 yards of quality real estate 15 feet left for the par to stop six points his early foray into this final speed of these greens at Hull Golf Club it's caught everyone's attention and that's very well judged good skills for the par of Matthews at 10 17 points after nine holes that's pretty good and that's a little on the dribbly side. However, 33 points, new clubhouse leader, Gavin Matthews, well played. So 33 points, the new mark. Timlin's got a chance with his second at 17. Lengthy par four, this 435, and the 18th is 453. So a tough finish at Hull Golf Club. And an awkward little chip shot left for him there. 
24 points through 13 holes. That's not too terrible for Master McCarthy. Come on, Tim. 33 points, another joint clubhouse leader. And the anxious wait will continue. Stop for the par at the fifth hole. And that looked pretty smooth, and that's why he scored 33 points. Will they make it? Timlin with the birdie chip at 17. Now this needs a very delicate touch. Back and through and just clips it onto the green, runs it out. Beautiful shot. 33 points for Patrick Timlin. And he is in the waiting lounge with the other 33ers. Let's catch up with Anna, who's going to talk us through the final three holes with the director of golf at Hull Golf Club, Aaron Pheasant. Thanks, Rob. Yes, all the players are out there. They've all teed off, so I thought I'd come down for a little quiet moment with the director of golf here at Hull Golf Club, Aaron Pheasant. Now, we're going to talk about the playoff because it's going to be a little tricky one, isn't it? They're looking at holes 1, 4 and 18, par 5, par 3, par 4. So there's a real variety. But here on the first tee, it's not the hardest of holes, is it? But what could go wrong? Yeah, it's not the hardest of holes, no. But when the players have played 18 holes already, 500 yards, uphill, it's going to be tough. You're going to have nerves, you know, emotions are going to be running high and you've got an uphill tee shot to start with. So it's going to be quite tricky. And it's one of those holes that if you miss a fairway by five, ten yards, there's lots of trees. If you miss it by a long way, then you can get lucky and you can get a long club out and have a crack and get it near, near the green. And then just for the approach, what kind of pin position are they going to be facing? Yeah, well, this is a tricky one. It's well-guarded green anyway. Um, and the green slopes from back to front. You've got the pin cut about eight yards um, onto the, uh, the plane surface. So if you're above the pin, it's going to leave a devilishly quick put towards the, uh, towards the pin, yeah. I like the sound of a devilishly quick putt. Thanks, Aaron. On to the next. OK, we're here on the back of the green of the second playoff hole. It's a par three. What could be so difficult? Well, it's 165 yards, so it's not too long, but it's our second longest par three on the course. It's a typical James Braid par three, which is um, a small green surrounded by lots of little bunkers. Um, but it's all about the tee shot. And if you miss this green left, you are going to be in trouble. As you say, Aaron, accuracy is key. But once you're on the green, I mean, it's a pretty big green. Is it going to be quite tough? I know they're really fast at the moment. Yeah, well, you may say it's big, but it's the landing area. The pin's cut at the back. The pin's 21 yards on today on the fourth. So if, if you leave your ball short, you've got an uphill putt. If not, it may even spin back down towards the, the trap at the front of the bunker. So it's trying to hit your ball or be brave enough to hit your ball up to the back of the green. Bravery is key in a playoff on the trip. OK, final hole of the playoff, the 18th, a par four. This should separate the men from the boys, am I right? Most definitely. So it's all going to come down to this last hole. Uh, 450 yards, and it's all about nerves. So you need to get a good drive away. If you miss this fairway 10 yards left, 10 yards right, you're going to struggle to get on the green. And I think that when you get up to the green as well, that's going to pose a few problems. Because, well, we're just off the back of it now, but there's a lot of runoff. You could overshoot this green very easily. Well, you can feel right now Anna, that we're playing downwind. So you've got to actually land this ball short anyway for it to run onto the green. But if you, if you slightly miss, miss cut your approach shot, if your adrenaline's flowing a little bit and you fire yourself over the back of a green, yeah, I'm not sure if you're going to get up and down. Well, it is the World Championship Finals, so we promised it would be tough, and it sounds exactly like that's what you've done, Aaron. Back to you, Rob. Thanks, Annie. Yes, I'm really looking forward to this year's World Championship Final, and I mean the Final Four, especially with those three holes that are pretty tricky, a par four, a par three, and a par five, but not necessarily in that order. To Alex Edmonds' attempt at the eighth. We know this is just a little dinky par three. It's caused problems for the field this hole today, but that's more than acceptable. Rocky Llewellyn playing at the back of the field. He thinks he's something special. And that's why he's special. He keeps hitting shots like that. He's up. Mm, how unlucky. Very unlucky. Turned a 15-footer into a 30-footer. Right up the top of the slope as well. Not easy. Ben Rosenbrook, everybody's favorite. On his back garden. Well, extended back garden. And continuing to play some sparkling iron shots. That's a beauty. 
Let's see if Rocky can get this close. It's a difficult putt. Look at Dave. He's got the oh the flags out. He's watching it. He's watching it. He's seen that before. Rocky Llewellyn making his move. Puff of the cheeks. Business as usual. Rosenbrook for the birdie. 33 points. No mistake whatsoever. Very impressive round this. He continues to be impressive. Alex Edmonds. Yeah, that wasn't easy. Two different speeds in that and 35 points for Alex. New clubhouse leader. Maybe he's through to the final four. What about Rocky? Work to do, 30 points. Little out of position at 17, hitting a low cutter and a runner. It's bumbling its way forward. And will it make it onto the green? Oh, he has done from there, that's terrific. That may be a lifesaver, that one for Rocky. I've got this, Dave. Keep your mouth shut. Rosenbrook at 16, three to go for the man who's right on form. Come on, be as good as you look. Too well struck, to be honest, right over the top of the flag. And now a lengthy putt. What about Llewellyn's putt for a birdie at 17? He's already hold one monster to date. Can't do it again, can he? And he'll take the par after the tee shot. Very good work. Rosenbrook for the two at 16. Left to right, running down the hill. And there's a man who knows these greens. Even for him, he couldn't put it stone dead. I've given this to Rocky. Could be a mistake. No, the putting stroke does not let him down. 34 points, and that is currently in a playoff position. So Rocky's stressed. Ben Rosenbrook isn't. Especially if this goes in for 35 points, which it does. And a par at the last. 37 points, Ben Rosenbrook. Best score of the day. Well, time to find out who's going to make it through to the final. A playoff on 33 points, four men for one spot. Matthews, McCarthy, Stott, and Patrick Timlin, who produced this world beater to book his place in the final four. What a shot that was under that pressure. Thoroughly deserving his spot in the final. Well played, Patrick Timlin. So just to remind you of the successful four, Ben Rosenbrook, Alex Edmonds, and Paul Llewellyn, joined by Patrick Timlin. After the brilliance of that pitch shot, well played the others, not quite good enough. It's time for Hunt's Hunch. <laughs> what do we think? Then we've got four magnificent golfers on the tee who can put a, anything between them. Who could back against Llewellyn? Patrick Timlin, what a golfer. But we saw him fall apart at Preston, literally as a three shot swing on the last hole. Ben Rosenbrook, is his course. Is it his day? Alex, I don't know much about, but I know it was nervous. Who am I tipping? I can't say. That's actually the best prediction William has made all year long. When we come back after the break, it's the William Hunt World Championship Final itself for 2017. The Perfect Gentleman's Playground. Welcome back to the big one, the culmination of the 2017 William Hunt Trilby Tour. Ten venues, over a thousand players, and it all comes down to this. Four men play three holes to determine who will become the 2017 Trilby Tour world champion. Mr. Patrick Timlin. Second, Mr. Paul Llewellyn. Third, Mr. Alex Edmund. And finally, Mr. Ben Rothenberg. Ben Rosenbrook, age 27, Hull Golf Club and Club Scratch. I, I played just my normal game and I just thought, right, let's just pull some putts and I'll just, I won't, I won't force it, I'll just hopefully they'll, they'll come and the putter was hot, so that was good. It'd be amazing. It'd be just, not particularly for myself, but for all the hard work that all the members have put in um, and Aaron um, and his team, it, you know, it'd just be great. Like last year we missed out in the twos, um, it'd just be great to be able to, uh, to win one golf club member actually win it. 
So Ben with the driver, 505 yards. Each hole at Hull Golf Club's got a name. This is Braid's Walk. We'll give the final three holes their proper names. Smack down the middle. Hi, my name's Alex Edmonds. I'm 32. I play at the Oxfordshire and I play off seven. Good front nine, putted well on the front nine um, and just, just sort of carried it through the back nine. A couple of free putts on the back nine were frustrating, finished with a, a couple of uh, one-pointers which wasn't the best, but yeah, 35 points was a, was a good turnout for today. I'm, I'm happy with that. I didn't expect to be in the playoff, but I don't want to write myself off. I'd be absolutely elated, absolutely elated. Uh, yeah, be chuffed a bit. Let's see how it goes. It's a scratch situation for all four players. No strokes, Edmonds letting loose. The crowd loving that as well. Next on the tee, Chasing down there. Llewellyn. Paul Llewellyn, age 45, Redsill Priory, handicap of five. Tough, 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 tough today. Um, I feel like Tarzan, I've been in more trees. Um, but we've scrapped as we normally do. And we've managed to, to get into um, top four, so really chuffed. But we've played against Ben a few times. He's a very, very good golfer. Um, I don't know the other two guys in the playoff but um, hopefully they'll get a little bit nervous and um, go off like the red arrows. They haven't so far, Rocky. Your turn. Is that the third good tee shot? It is. Patrick Timlin, age 42, Lowlands Golf Club, handicap two. Uh, I had a good day today. Uh, I didn't drive the ball particularly well but I managed to scramble and score reasonably well. I had a bad round at Preston, where I blew up in the last three. So William's been digging me a little bit. It's a three-all playoff and not a two. So hopefully I can do it in this three. It'll be great retribution for Patrick Timlin if he can do this. Bit of adrenaline in this. Full tilt. Just missing the fairway on the right, but no danger. Let's get to Anna halfway down the first with the playoff panel. Thanks, Rob. Well, isn't this exciting? We're just down here on the edge of the first fairway with our playoff panel, Coach Barney and Trilby Tour veteran James Vos. James, I'm going to come to you first because I know you've been in this situation. <laughs> what kind of emotions and tensions will be running through these guys' veins right now in this playoff? Uh, I would imagine most of them are probably quite nervous because I think three of them, this is their first final first playoff as well Paul's done it before so you would expect him to be a bit calmer but the other three will probably be pretty nervous yeah, yeah I would imagine so yeah. coach Barney we've seen four pretty solid drives there off on the first tee what do you make who's in the best position and how would you approach this second shot well I think Ben's in pole position as is Alex they've got a nice shot on the fairway so they can definitely have a go at it Paul Williams ball's just sitting down a little bit in the rough so he may struggle but he's got a great short game so he could easily make a birdie from there and then Patrick's probably just a bit too far out to get the green in too but certainly again could make a birdie well a good life for Patrick for his second give this a belt up the hill oh yeah very good looking swing and the ball flight is arrow straight couldn't have done better than that that was excellent in front of the crowds and the cameras and the pressure Top stuff. Coach Barney might have got a bit of uh, confusion going along. It's the pressure of commentating when you're live on the fairways with Anna. This is Alex Edmonds from that sitting down lie. And from there, that's a pretty good effort. Because Rocky Llewellyn, <laughs> right down the left-hand side of the fairway. And the green is within range. Dave's given him his fairway wood. Now, is this just hooking a little bit? Well, only a little bit. That's just short of the green. Chipping and putting territory. All these people here at Hull Golf Club looking for their man from Hull Golf Club, Ben Rosenbrook, cutting loose. Right out the middle of the club. And bunkered. Good strike. And from there, it's not a bad position to be in. That's where the pin is, so he's got plenty of green to work with. In their hordes, they are watching this the final, because they are going to see a world champion after all. Players are nervous, the crowd's nervous, whole golf club's nervous. It's all about the short game. Timlin. Pitching a putt. 
Good sound, wasn't it? Oh, a fantastic shot. Beautifully clipped. That's very makeable. Edmunds to go next. From the rough, not quite as much grip from here. And just releasing a little bit too much. So they're in three. Just to remind you, no strokes for any of these players. It's all scratch. Rosenbrook with a lengthy bunker shot. Club face wide open. A little chunk and run. He knew exactly what to do from there. There's a splash of sand a couple of inches behind the ball. And nice to see that flying towards the target. Rocky Llewellyn. Little flop shot over the bunker. Oh, hasn't he played that well? Seeing some quality here in the final. It's just the first hole, the par five. Seb Carmichael Brown alongside James Vos. Two old hands. Edmonds with his birdie attempt from the fringe. He can putt. And he will putt. So five not guaranteed for Edmonds. Under pressure by the brilliance of the other three. Rosenbrook for the birdie at the first. And that one slides by. So did not cover the first hole, the par five in four shots. It'll be a five for Rosenbrook. Timlin with a wonderful opportunity after a superb pitch. And that one just leaking away to the right edge. It's a par five for Patrick. Disappointing after the superb third shot. Rocky Llewellyn underneath the hole in the right spot. Oh, and he's dragged it left. So only a par for Rocky. It could be honors even amongst all four of them after the first. Edmonds for his par five. Yes, buoyed by the fact that he hasn't seen a birdie. So he will tie the lead going into the second playoff hole. Which is a par three, the fourth. Rosenbrook to complete the set. No problems at all. So to the fourth hole. And this is where it really starts to get sweaty and nervous and tingly. Oh, I mean, that started out with four amazing drives and incredible drives. It got a little bit scrappy then, but everyone's come in level, so they're all, they're all scraped apart. Or, you know, I expected a birdie or two there. Uh, you know, I, I know it's my job to predict something here, but I can predict that Patrick Tinlin will be there at the end, that Paul Llewellyn will be there at the end, that Alex Edmonds, I don't know anything about Alex, but I know Ben Rosenbrook is a scratch handicapper playing his own golf course with no shots given and no shots given to anyone. What do you think? It's got to be Ben, hasn't it? Well, normally those fences give you splinters, William, but you've gone for Ben Rosenbrook. Brave call for the local man, scratch player, giving no shots away. 165 yards, the fourth hole, beaches it's called. And he's putting for a two trying to put pressure on the other players, and that's how to do it. Sometimes it's not easy when you're the local favorite. It doesn't always work in your favor. Edmonds to reply. And this is left, but how far? It's a long way over there. Par's now a fantastic score. They're starting to spread out. Rocky Llewellyn. Slow back and rip through. Fine swing. Maybe another half club, that's all. And last but not least, Patrick Timlin. Well, it looks good. Is it up on the right level? Very close to Rockies. And just about hanging on, I think. Well, it's a pleasure to be joined on our panel by Seb Carmichael Brown, two-time Trilby World Champion. Seb, second hole here, and it looks like Alex in a, is in a spot of trouble. What would you suggest for him here? For Alex, I mean, he's, he's in a really bad spot there. I mean, as Barney was saying before, upping and downing around here, you can't really get the check on the greens, so you've got to sort of play these low running shots, and he hasn't really got the room to make that yeah. under the tree. 
if he makes a four, I think he'll be fairly happy from there. Just keep himself in it with one left. Yeah. James, this uh, shows a lot of skill, this hole, but we've got three pretty tasty putts for the other three. Is it a bit of a putt-off situation? Um, I think so. I'd probably say Ben's in the best position there. Uh, Patrick and Paul have got to come up the slope, so... Uh but they've obviously potted well because they're in the playoffs. So uh, they've had a good day. So let's see what happens. Yeah. And Coach Barney, when it comes to the, this kind of putting situation, how much pressure is on the caddies? Well, absolutely. But they've been good, you know. And of course, Paul Llewellyn's caddy is fantastic. You know, he knows all the greens backwards. So uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. OK, it's all about to kick off on the second green here. Let's see what happens. I always think that knowing the greens backwards isn't necessarily an advantage. You like to go forwards on the Trilby Tour. And that has gone forward but into a bunker. Careful with those metatarsals. Broken foot, went down the last and limped his way home. That wouldn't be a story. Edmonds, trying to save par with this. And well played, very well played. Bogey's not a terrible score, as the boys were alluding to. Seven, James. Patrick. Right at the crest of the slope. Beautiful putt. Beautiful putt that was. Unlucky. So he will be level going down the difficult 18th. Rocky would have watched that very carefully. Knows it moves a little bit right to left, left to right rather. I was reading the green backwards. Pace was spot on. So Llewellyn, par. In with a chance with a hole to go. Ben Rosenbrook, this is a makeable birdie putt, it really is. Another super effort. Par three for Ben. So three men locked together, and this to be just one back for Alex Edmonds. That's a superb up and down for his bogey four. Well played. One over par. Still has a chance. And that's all you can ask for when you're trying to become a world champion for the first time or maybe defend your championship from last year in the case of Rocky Llewellyn. Rosenbrook up with the driver. The appropriately named journey's end, this last par four. And that's a very well hit tee shot. Llewellyn next. Pitches right in the middle of the fairway. And just hanging on down the left hand side. That is also a gorgeous tee shot. Pensive, look at the two boys in purple. Putter and Vos. Timlin next up, the driver. This is very impressive, very impressive golf. All you can ask for really, Alex Edmonds. He's the man chasing and this is hooking violently. Fortunately left of the crowd Wrong fairway, I fancy. But he did the right thing. Had to have a go. Well, they're off on the final playoff hole. James, Alex has gone a bit wayward. Do you think his head could have just gone after that last hole? Unfortunately, it appears that way. Um, it, it's understandable. You know, there's a lot of pressure and they got a bit unlucky with the break off the tree, dropped a shot and yeah. it'll just make him feel it even more. Yeah. But as for the other three, Barney, they're in pretty good spots. They've really got to just go for the pin now, haven't they? So the pin's a very accessible position, so I really fancy one of them is going to make a birdie putt here. It's very exciting. And actually, just behind me, Mr. William Hunt, what do you make of this playoff? It's exciting, isn't it? Uh, well, it's fantastic, isn't it? You've got three fantastic golfers. You've got two lads we know all about, uh, Paul and uh, Ben. Patrick's joined us this year. Fantastic technique, and the strength that he showed of his game was at uh, Preston. Mm. But he blew up on the last. He fell apart the last hole. Alex has gone. And look, Alex, yeah. it's the Trilby Tour. It hurts. OK, guys, well, the big moment. If this is the last time that we could see the panel, predictions. Who is going to walk away with this playoff? Whoever birdies it. I think someone's got to, someone's got to birdie it. Give me a name, James. Give me a name. Ben. Ben, OK. Barney? I've been thinking Ben all day long, so, yeah, I think he's going to win. And Will? 
Barney's been thinking about Ben for a long time. <laughs> and uh, it's got, uh, you know, the tour wants Ben, don't they? Because it's home course and it's a great fairy tale. But Paul Llewell is in there. Well, I don't know if the tour does, but whole golf club does, definitely. Edmund's playing from the wrong fairway, up over the top of the trees. And a falling leaf means that's clipped something. <laughs> Might be the second from last shot. <laughs> Doesn't matter if it doesn't work out. You have made the World Championship final. Take that, grandkids. Timlin. Got a rotten bounce, that. So close to being a quality shot. Almost. Almost. But almost is not good enough on the Trilby Tour. You've got to be spot on. Rocky Llewellyn. He knows exactly what to do in this position. He's been there a thousand times. How good is that? Rocky piling the pressure on Ben Rosenbrook. Take that, Dave. I've got this. So from the rough, after a good tee shot, a long one, Rosenbrook. Doesn't like it. Needs a bit of a break here. And that's turned out all right. If it had got a firm bounce, it might have lurched from the rough. It's not too bad. He can make his part. It's quite simple for Alex Edmonds. He's got to hold this for a birdie to get back to level, you would think. Miracles do happen on the Trilby Tour. He couldn't have played a better shot. That was really well done from there. And that's an indication of how quick these greens are. Ben Rosenbrook, that's a face of concentration, isn't it? Using the putter from off the green. He knows it's fast. It's doing its best, isn't it? What a putt. One more turn of the ball and that would have gone in. And that might have been for the World Championship itself. So level par for Ben Rosenbrook. He's got the agony of watching Rocky Llewellyn go for birdie and the win. Before that, the birdie chip of Patrick Timlin. This could shock everybody. Not so straightforward from there. He'll have a par putter some 20 feet and he'll have to hold it. Alex Edmonds to finish plus one. Not going to be this time for Alex. No, but losing finalists is not a bad thing to have on your CV if you're a Trilby Turian. Rocky Llewellyn for the win and the birdie. And everything. Oh, are you kidding me? That was almost the defense of his title, his world championship in 2016. The heartbreak for Rocky Llewellyn. So taps in for his part. He will play off against Ben Rosenbrook and maybe one other. Will it be Patrick Timlin? This has to go in. Otherwise, it's bye-bye Trilby Tour for 2017 for Patrick. And ta-ta it is. Fine effort. But the 18th hole is a tough, tough finishing hole. Edmonds continuing. Always best to pick your ball up, I find, in these situations. All done and dusted for Alex. Doughty competitor. Not going to be his year. Ben Rosenbrook, a tap in from a couple of inches. So Ben Rosenbrook makes it extra time. And does he go to the 18th, the playoff hole, in better fettle than Rocky Llewellyn? It's a hard one to call because Rocky had that 25-footer on the last screen to be a world champion for two years on the bounce but it wasn't to be an agonizing lip out and they both have to go back to the 18th hole over 450 yards and do it all again. He's got some club head speed, Ben Rosenbrook. Staying in the air a long time. And how about that? How about the pump of adrenaline on that one? How far has that one gone? Give Joe Miller, the world long driving champion, a run for his money, that. Rocky Llewellyn. Now he gave that a bit of extra as well. 
Super impressive, both men firing it down the middle of the fairway. It will be Rocky to play first. This, the approach. Just a push, slight push, almost fantastic. And now he's bunkered. He gambled, it hasn't paid off. Over to you, Ben. Whole golf club, the entire golf club out in the fairway watching this. Oh, and they should be thrilled by the quality of the approach work from Ben Rosenbrook. Under pressure as a local hero, and he has come up trumps. Even Vos and Carmichael Brown, they're impressed. Takes a lot to get them excited. Almost got to think this has to go in. Birdie bunker shot. Rocky Llewellyn, too close to the ball. And the picture becoming clearer. Just not enough sand with this one. And he'll be next to play for the par, and it still might not be good enough. Has to go in. Oh, what a putt, Rocky. That's why he's called Rocky. He's hard as nails. Granite. And now he's just praying that Ben Rosenbrook misses. It's a curious mix of smiles and tension. There's family Rosenbrook, dad and the kids and the missus. Hopefully for them and Ben's concentration levels, it's going to end up in them crowning and seeing a new world champion on the Trilby Tour. That's what they're playing for. Will his nerve hold out for the birdie? At the last, and it's yeah. imperial striking and putting from Ben Rosenbrook. He is this year's Trilby Tour world champion. He did it at his golf club as their favorite son brings it home. Well, it was an enthralling playoff. It had just about everything, but the quality this year was through the roof. And that's what we've seen this year on the Trilby Tour. Old champions, new champions, and a brand new world champion. And a hunch, hunch that came right. Ah, oh, the little Rosenbrooks. Here they come, the mini-me's. Fantastic scenes here at Hull Golf Club. And this is the moment when he finds out that he is a world champion. Rocky Llewellyn presents him with the Trilby Tour World Championship Trophy for 2017. Ben Rosenbrook, an absolute star. So happy. Yeah, I'm just, um, I'm, I'm absolutely buzzing. It was fantastic. And what a way to bury the last in front of for all the members, um, friends and family, it's just, yeah, it's just, it doesn't get any better than this. We've given shot of the day to this neat chip in from David Dean on the eighth. And now it may be the final, but we've still got some awful golf to round up in Rogue's Gallery. First up, we stay on the eighth for this supercharged bunker exit from Dean Peruzzi. Richard Bond possibly plays this shot on 13 with slightly too much caution. Now Paul Naylor and the Tree of Doom as the unbelievable champion of Cumbria first bananas across the 17 fairway to seek out the biggest tree in the area. He then decides to show off by rebounding his next shot off the very same tree. And when accused of showboating for the cameras, he doubles down and bounces off his deciduous nemesis one final time. Tremendous work by Mr. Naylor. Outgoing world champion Paul Llewellyn on the 15th, taking the straight line right to the shins of our cameraman Juby. Ow! And in a similar position, John O'Malarkey takes the high route over the head of Juby to... Oh, we know not where. Phil Johns plays at Hull Golf Club, so you think he'd know that exiting the bunker on the fourth requires a dainty chip rather than a rifle shot. But there must be something odd in that bunker because Lee Heppler plays an almost identical high-velocity misfire. On the seventh, the ever-accommodating Bradley Hyde ensures we get one of our wild ball-in-a-head shots. And for that, many thanks, Bradley. 
and we like this shot of Neil Brimley on the 9th because it has a touch of widescreen John Wayne epicness about it. Proper matinee idol stuff. <laughs> it's still rubbish golf, though. James Bloomer, however, in much the same position, offers a shot more in the style of a Looney Tunes cartoon. This overhead bunker escape on 17 from champion of Yorkshire Peter Ferris gives us the opportunity to play spot the concerned onlooker. Wait for it. Oh, there he is. Yes, hello. It's called a lens. Ever wanted to see a former fighter pilot misguide a shot into a patch of daisies? Well, here on the 17th, Jed Doherty is more than happy to oblige. And ever wanted to see a former fighter pilot trudging dejectedly through some pine trees? Well, once again, Jed Doherty is more than happy to oblige. And finally, on the 17th, champion of Northumberland Mark Walton does his best Harlem Globetrotters impression with this intricate piece of ball juggling, ending with a flourish of despair. Now, let's see what William made of the day. But Ben Rosenbrook, what a player, what a guy, what a great family. And he had the better of Paul today, simple as that. You know, Paul's a great, great loser there. Big, you know, um, just the best. I think it's the best season we've ever had this. The 2017 is the best season we've ever had. That's 10 years of Trilby Tour. Let's have another one. Just one programme left of the 2017 series, and it's the traditional Rogues Gallery special next week on Christmas Day. In the meantime, if you'd like to get involved in the Trilby Tour, please contact us via the website at www.trilbytour.com. We'll see you next week. William Hunt's several roles sponsors the Trilby Tour. The perfect gentleman's playground.